Unto Thee, O Lord, do we give thanks. Let us pray. Almighty God, God of the universe, who with thy wisdom created the heavens and the earth, from generation to generation, thou hast been our help. The God of our fathers, Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, there is no power like unto thee. Thou who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, stretched out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out as a tent for the inhabitants of the earth to dwell under. Thou who spoke all things into existence, every cell, every breath, every thought is sustained by you. For thou art all sufficient in the source of all blessings. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. We, thy people who seek after righteousness and desire to do thy will, 
approach thy mercy seat this morning. With humble and thankful hearts, asking that you will open the windows of heaven once again. Hear our prayer and forgive us of the wrongs that we have committed against thee and against each other and be favorable unto us. We thank you for granting us the privilege to enter thy presence to commune with thee. For in your presence, we find fullness of joy and our hearts are filled with joy that you have blessed us together, our spiritual family in this virtual assembly to worship and praise you for your faithfulness to the house of Israel. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up from our sleep and restoring our souls with the breath of life, for keeping us in safety as we slept. We praise thy name for your loving kindness in sending us your servant, Prophet William Saunders Crowley, who answered the call, came down, and reconnected us to the Ancient of Days and called us to repentance. Thank you for your servant, Chief Rabbi Philip E. McNeil, Grandfather Abraham, who is waving the banner of truth for us today. Bless and keep him, guide his steps, and continue to endow him with your wisdom and understanding as he leads your people. We ask that you will comfort and bless those who are sick in their homes, in the hospital, and wherever they may be, who are suffering this morning. Visit them with your peace and with your healing hand, for thou art the source of all blessings. We ask you, Father, to be with the leaders of our nation and of our world. Give them the understanding that is needed for our times. Put within their hearts compassion to deal righteously with the people and with the situations we are facing. Our trust is in you, the God of all the earth. For we know not what to do of ourselves, but we know that you have the solution to our problems. Therefore, we wait on you. Strengthen our faith and our desire to keep your commandments and hide us under the shadow of thy wings. For you said in your word that you would bless abundantly those who keep your word and truth and that you will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. We pray that you will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence that surround us today and cover us with your feathers. We pray that you will continue to bless the house of Israel and that you will bless this virtual assembly with a double portion of your spirit and that our cups will be filled and overflowing and our spirit renewed. In your name we pray, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Unto the house of Israel, give an honor and praise to the God of my salvation, who is my strength and song. Thanking him always for the coming of Prophet William Saunders Crowdy, recognizing our chief rabbi, Philip E. McNeil, grandfather Abraham, Rabbinical Council, Evangelists at Large, Evangelists, Elders of Israel, Sister Elders, Grand General and District Officers, and the sons and daughters of Grandfather Abraham. All hail. I pray all is well with each of you. And let us be encouraged that we will win the battle Jehoshaphat's way, fasting, praying, and rising early in the morning to give God the glory. The scripture for devotional this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, the 1 and 40th chapter in verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. The phrase, Fear thou not, is the most repeated command in the Bible. I have read that there is a fear not for every day of the week, including leap year. It appears that God knew that we would need to be reminded to keep fear in check. For if it is not, it will decrease our faith, limit our victories, and cause us to wonder, where is the God of our fathers? 
the crisis of faith in the command to fear not in these troubling times is our thought for meditation this morning. Our nation in the world is a political disaster. Rules of law and justice have been abandoned. There seems to be no regard for human life and no reverence for God. Great changes are taking place in our nation and internationally. Wars and rumors of wars, diseases and afflictions on every side. Every day we hear and see man's inhumanity towards each other. Those who have been sworn to protect and defend have become the enemy. How do we hold fast to faith when we are fighting enemies seen and unseen? COVID-19 raging throughout the world. Family, friends, and foe are in a battle for the life. A time when we find ourselves overwhelmed and in an anxious state wondering how we will cope with the uncertainties that each day brings. But it is during times of crisis such as now, that's when our faith is tested. That's when the spirit of the Lord lifts us up, whispers in our ear, fear thou not for I am with thee. That's when we open our Bibles and find comfort and assurance as we read from the book of Isaiah, God's prophet who paints a vivid portrait of the magnitude of God's power and wisdom. And he reassures us that there is no uncertainties with God, for he is infinite. We cannot measure him. Wherever we are and whatever we are dealing with, God is there. He is eternal, unchangeable, and all powerful. He said, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. I love the passage of scripture in John 19, 11, where Jesus, when threatened to be put to death by Pilate, said to him, thou could have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. We also must know that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us, if we want to combat fear. We must know that the God that we serve will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. He will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. In our journey through this land, we will need God to open rivers of water in our wilderness. He did it before. Believe that he is able and willing to deliver Israel again. Fear the Lord who has the power to destroy both soul and body. The book of Isaiah reveals the full dimensions of God's power, judgment, and salvation. The Holy One of Israel. He is just, but he will punish, and he will reward. He will deliver his people. For he says, call upon me in the day of trouble, when I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Let us not forget, when our deliverance comes, to give God the glory and the praise, for he is worthy. In this for one and for the chapter, the nations are in, in the believer, in the non believers and worshipers of idols are summoned to appear before God and to present their argument that their idol gods can be compared to the wisdom and power of Israel's God. Come near together to judgment, O nations, and let the people renew their strength. For it will not compare to the strength that comes from God, who raised up the righteous man, our father Abraham, out of an idolatrous country by his power, who said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great name, and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And Abraham did as God commanded. He went out not knowing where he was going, but knowing who he was following. Absolute faith and trust in God. And we see the dimensions of God's power once again in the lives of Israel. When they were taken into captivity in Babylon, God raised up one from the north to carry out his righteous purpose increased his strength 
caused him to be victorious in conquering Babylon, and as a result, issued the decree allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem. Not because Cyrus thought of it, but because it was prophesied that this would happen before he was born. The Lord is thy redeemer. And he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. He formed Cyrus from the womb and raised him up in righteousness. When God has a purpose for your life, he will call you to his service to carry it out. Therefore, keep silence, O nations, who think they have power and are in control. To whom will ye liken God? Proclaim it, declare it, and set it forth before him. Come before God's judgment and state your proof that you have power compared to him. For who hath declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time that we may say he is righteous? It was questions put to those who believe they have equal power. Silence and more silence. He, the Lord our God, is the first and the last. He who was present when the first generation was called in that great exodus from Egypt will still be there when the last of them. I recall our former leader, Rabbi J.U. August Cardi Jr. saying that we are the evidence of the validation of God's presence. For if it were not for the power of God, we would not have survived as a people. It was not by the will of man or a congressional victory. And we shall be victorious again. For he says in his word, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. The leaders of the world and those who seek to destroy God's people, behold, they are vanity. We are just refreshing our memory this morning, saints, about what God has already done for us so that we will not forget to witness to the power of God. The nations of the world to the ends of the earth saw the wondrous works of the Lord then and now. They feared and their response was to make more idols, send more military force with bigger guns, idols to destroy the people of God. They worked together in the abuse of power to make their idol gods of molten images fastened with nails. Idols that have no power, nothing but wind and confusion. We are living in a confused world right now. Our people are living under grievous calamities. But we remember the words of God, who said to strengthen ye the weak hand and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and he will save you. We must strengthen each other in the promises of God. For before him, there was no God formed and there will be no other God after him. He works and who can hinder it? The nations today and their gods of confusion may rise up with a preconceived notion of power and think they can challenge Israel's God. They are challenged to produce their cause, bring forth their strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. For all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. The crisis of faith and the command to fear not, our confidence is reassured when we hear these words. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Oh, what a blessing to be chosen by God and to be his friend. There is no need for fear when we allow the encouraging words of these verses to take root in our soul. 
they will bring us peace. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So how do we answer the crisis of faith and the command to fear not and trust completely in the promises of God? The answer is given in 10 words, simple and direct. For I am with thee, for I am thy God. We have heard and seen since the day of our fathers that the Lord is our God and he is our salvation. Praise the Lord, our Redeemer, the God of Israel is with us. He is with us in the mountain when everything is going well in our lives. He is with us in the valley where there is trials and disappointments. He is our security, our protector. He will strengthen us when we are weak. He will uphold us when we stumble. He will guide us with his right hand of righteousness. Be not dismayed, be of good courage. Think not for the God of Israel has promised that he will help us and not forsake us. For the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. The Lord knows that we are going through difficult times right now. This virus has affected all of us, and the conditions and conflict in our nation is disturbing. But we Israel, the chosen of God, need to approach it strong in the faith that God will take care. Strengthen ourselves with the word of truth, for it is full and sufficient to carry us through the days ahead. Fear not, be strong and courageous, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. And all men will see and know and may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. Wait on the Lord, fear not, be of good courage. Take comfort in knowing that the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. When we remember that the God of Israel is with us, holding us up, strengthening us to cope with whatever the situation may be, we will not faint in a crisis, for our hope is in the Lord. May God bless and keep you, is my prayer.
close our devotional with the mitzvah. May the Lord watch with us and for us when we are absent one from another. Amen.